Here in the U.S., the number of confirmed cases continues to rise with more than We 30. direct a statewide order for people to stay at home. Remain indoors to the greatest extent. All our residents will be subject to a stay-at-home order. And for me, the greatest priority is to keep you guys safe um, and healthy. And I think for us, that means having everyone work from home. So level three means we are shutting down the office. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. They're just going to have some questions for you. So if it's something you don't feel like you can answer, that's totally fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll, I won't make stuff up. <laughs> oh, really? this, this is too oh. important to you know, make shit up. You know? <laughs> My name is Jeffrey Swisher, uh, MD. I am an anesthesiologist uh, and chairman of the Department of Anesthesiology at California Pacific Medical Center in San Francisco, California. Hello. Hi. Hi, doctor. Dr. Swisher, how you doing? Good, I'm fine, how you doing? Nice to meet you, Dr. Swisher. Can I just get to straight to the questions for you? Absolutely. In comparison to past outbreaks, how long do you think this pandemic will last for? Uh, that's a good question. I think probably this is gonna last for at least through November, uh, just based upon data from- oh, November? Uh, yeah, I know, unfortunately. <laughs> Would that be until like the cure is found, or is there a point where we can be able to go back into society? I think it depends on the rate of infection in the community that you live. If you're talking about a vaccine, we're not gonna see a vaccine for maybe more like 18 months. Uh, we're still very early on on the up peak of this right now. We're not at the downside. So I, I think we're gonna be isolated for quite a while. What would you say to those who still say, you know, this, this is just a flu or the media is being alarmist? Yeah, the media is not being alarmist. We, we have not been hit with the, the surge that uh, Italy has seen. We're about two weeks behind that. Uh, but if you look at the rates, uh, the rate of uh, infections and also the rate, the mortality rate, we're tracking it at the same rate and maybe even a little bit higher than Italy is right now. If you look at the number of worldwide deaths now, we're starting to approach 10,000. Uh, that's a lot. And again, we're in the early stages of it in the rest of the world. So there's a very good possibility that we're going to be seeing you know, upwards of millions of deaths from this. That's not the flu. My dad is a flight attendant for United. Uh -huh. and he He's 66 and he's still flying internationally and I can't convince him to stop. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you I don't know <laughs> what you would suggest I say that maybe would give I would, him a better perspective. I would say that he should take all uh, judicious care. I think he probably understands the risks as well and I bet he loves his job like I love my job. I, I have an 85-year-old mom and I, you know, tell her do not go out. And it's hard for them to listen. So I'm thinking about the food supply and mm -hmm. maintaining that. The people who work in the grocery store, they, uh, yeah. they have no protection. And in some ways, I wonder if they should close to the public and just employ shoppers who bring stuff out to your car. Any mechanism that allows people to distance themselves, to decrease, like you said, the surge, that's the important thing. I mean, ultimately, this is a virus. It's a very virulent virus. Most everybody's going to get exposed to it. Hopefully, we'll get immunity. The hard part in this country is that we haven't had a screening test. So not knowing the denominator, in other words, how many people are infected, makes it a little difficult to predict. I know healthcare professionals all over the world right now are working long and arduous hours, and it's only going to increase as more and more cases come out. You're right. We're, we're working really long hours. And I think uh, if you look at some of the Chinese doctors uh, that were in Wuhan, I was just on a conference call on Monday with uh, 30 of these guys and they look exhausted. There's no question about it, yeah. What is like the general morale like of people like yourself and your colleagues that are fighting coronavirus on the front lines? As far as the mood goes, I would say um, appropriately concerned um, and a little scared um, and uh, you know, want to protect ourselves from getting sick ourselves and definitely want to protect our families from getting sick from us. Now most doctors, nurses, techs, you know, people in the hospital, the reason we're in medicine is because we like helping people. And I think most of us uh, are really willing to do what we need to do to make this go away. Have you seen your casework or like the type of work you're doing change or shift? One of the big things that 
that we're starting to do in mid is we're repurposing ourselves and I will have to probably go and staff an intensive care unit. So take care of people on ventilators. And we've taken measures, I would say, in a graded fashion since this whole thing started to the point right now that we're, we're not allowing people to come in with their you know, families when they come in for surgery. So a lot of people are going in, you know, pretty scared without any support mechanism. Mi ha guardato chiedendo che fine dovesse fare, qual era la sua fine. Io What's been like the most heartbreaking story or experience for you amidst all this? Well, having somebody I know contract this and and and, and be critically ill in the ICU, uh, who I work with. And um, so when you see someone um, that is my age, I mean, he's otherwise was a healthy person, relatively healthy, uh, now facing the possibility of dying, that really brings it home. In what ways do you think the world will be different after this, especially for the kids of today? Okay, well, I think this is a, a, a somewhat of a traumatic experience for a lot of people. So I think that it's going to make a mark uh, on a lot of people. Uh, I have a daughter who's a senior in college. Uh, she's my youngest and she's not having a graduation ceremony because of this. And I think that we have to um, acknowledge that there's a lot of loss. The other issue that's going to be certainly long-term is uh, economic. I think that a lot of kids are worried about that right now, uh, college-age kids especially. I am worried because I do live with two parents who um, are both getting old. I've heard from the government saying that we're going to have to shut down until August. And a lot of families now are not having jobs at the moment, so they're not making income. Personally, right now, I just don't think we're going to survive until August because that's just too long. Yeah, so you can go back to things like World War II when everybody really had to collectively give up a lot of things uh, and all work together. And I think that that is sort of where we're at right now. I think when this is all said and done, we're gonna look at this as a really seminal event in American history, world history. I feel like we are very individualistic and it's yeah, hard to yeah. have a collectivist mindset when it comes to stuff like this. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's it eventually it benefits all of us to be collectivist in this setting. Uh, yeah. And I think it's the hardest thing is to get people to get out of the mindset of, of uh, you know, uh, about me as opposed to about everybody. How, how are your supplies? Do you have enough masks right now? Are you having to ration masks? No, we don't have enough supplies. And two, yeah, we're having to ration at this point. Uh, it's starting to get better. We're getting some donations from the community. Like yesterday, uh, the Irish Contractors Union in San Francisco just donated us a whole boatload of N95 masks. If people have masks, can they send them to like their local hospitals? Yeah, they can actually. There's uh, hospitals are have uh, donation uh, points. Uh, obviously, what type of mask is important? And uh, you know, if you don't use equipment correctly, you can infect yourself. And you know, clearly, we're at the front lines and we're with people who are infected. Uh, so we have a very high rate of potentially getting infected unless we protect ourselves. What is one thing that you wish the general public knew? This is not fake news, number one. This is real. And that the most important thing you can do is to listen to the advice about social distancing. The more we can do that, the more we can flatten the curve and decrease the number of cases acutely. Uh, I don't know overall if they're going to decrease the number of cases, but what we don't want is having a surge at the hospital that overwhelms the resources of the hospital. I think this is going to change our society, and I mean, hopefully that we will be more compassionate, that we'll care more about other people. Uh, I think that hopefully the goal is, is that we're going to be a better country as a result of it, even though it's going to be hard. I'm not saying it's not going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and for answering those questions and also right. for, for your service. I know that must be a tough time for you. It's tough. Yeah, there's no question about it. But I mean, I, I, I'm a pretty optimistic person. I, I'm a glass, you know, half full type person. So I really think that we'll get through this. Awesome. Same. Great. Right. You. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, for being on the front line and thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. Thank you so much for covering up the time, doctor. Um, Stay safe and thank you. Thank you so much. It was a great right. talking to you. All right, you too, take care. Bye. Hello, thanks for watching the video and thank you to everyone who came on to ask questions and to Dr. Swisher for making the time for us. Please check out the official CDC documentation that we will have linked below or on me or something um, if you feel like you need any more information on what's going on. And uh, stay safe and thank you for watching. We really appreciate you doing this with us, and no I problem. think everyone who was part of the call appreciates it too.
Yeah, I really would, you know, it's like, I tell you what gives me hope is actually seeing people like you, seeing all these younger people, uh, you know, who actually have A, great questions, B, seem concerned, and uh, it gives me great hope for the future, I'll tell you. So it's good. Cool, glad yeah. to hear it.